remind you that the views expressed in today's show do not reflect the views of KZLX, KNWT, or Northwest Missouri State University. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the show. Welcome back to the weekend sports kickoff on KNWT and KZLX. Trevor Mater, Ryan Elliott, Jacob Blair, Kramer Sansone with you for the next hour and 14 minutes um, as we're talking everything in the sports world. A lot coming your way. we got college basketball, um, maybe a little bit of fantasy football update. Also, we will preview the Maryville High School football matchup, a district final between Savannah and Maryville tonight going on at the Hound Pound. You can hear that game on X106 with Ryan Elliott and Jacob Blair on the call. Reminder, all broadcasts of Maryville football are brought to you by Joywalk, located in the Marymart Shopping Center, and Nahue Valley Bank. For more information, you can visit online at nvb.com. You can tune to a special edition of This Week in High School Sports at around 6 o'clock as well. But guys, getting back to... uh, the, the big thing this week, I think, for us, college basketball season, we're all avid college basketball fans. This time of year, I don't get to watch as much of it as I would like, but uh, it's great to have college basketball back, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Um, college basketball is, is probably my favorite of the major sports to follow, um, and it's just it's just so exciting. There's so much going on. It's It's a lot of fun. Yeah, so we went through um, earlier this week, and we picked uh, was it six conferences – um, the AAC, the ACC, the Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12, and SEC, who we think is going to be that conference champion. One we didn't pick that we'll touch on real quick, um, the Big East. We're all going to pick Villanova to win it, right? Yeah. Yeah, we are going to all pick Villanova, but I still think I, it's an interesting conference in terms of... I think it's going to be a down year for the Big East. I think really the only other team that we might even mention might be a Marquette team. Yeah. Other I still think that, Xavier's going to have, going to have a shot to they'll, they'll be down. This year. They're going to be down Providence this year. is normally a tournament team, but they're not going to compete to, to win the, the Big East. I don't so. think Providence will be a tournament yeah, it's, team it's tough this to year. The other either. team I think you look at, that, that especially if they get to the tournament, could make a little bit of noise is Seton Hall. Um, they always mm-hmm. play an interesting game. They always people struggle with Seton Hall because they're just such a good team in terms of fundamentals, and they they can put together a good game. So I think that's another team that you look at and you think, well, you know, if they can make the tournament, they might have a chance to make some noise as well. See, see I like Creighton. This There's is a something. lot of stuff going on at Creighton it's, right now. Yeah, I always for some reason it's always something. Yeah, so. I think Villanova is the consensus favorite, I think, to win the Big East. Marquette maybe has a chance to, to snag a couple games. Xavier's still going to be solved. They did lose their head coach. And then also, like Ryan said, don't count Seton Hall. Let's go ahead and jump into the American Athletic Conference, which has, over the last two years, been a really fun conference to watch. Um, to, to me, also, it's kind of worked its way into you can – there's it, it's right there with the Power Five. It's almost – with college basketball, you can almost say a Power Seven – with the Big yeah. East and the AAC, is is there no longer the the teams in the AAC are no longer the teams you know if they have a really good season even struggle to make the tournament they're all there they're normally punch several teams into the tournament so it's a, still a really good conference right now. So let's go ahead and make our American Athletic Conference championship predictions. Ryan Elliott, who are you taking? I'm going to take the Houston Cougars. I think this is a Houston team that's going to be much much improved from last year and a, a team that last year had a good year. Um, and, and made some noise in the AAC. So, uh, you know, just another year for, for Houston, and I think they this time get a chance to step up and uh, take over the AAC from, from a tough Cincinnati team. Jacob? I'm also taking Houston. This is a three-team race for the AAC with Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston. Unfortunately, Wichita State is not good this year. Lost some, lost a lot of pieces there, so we won't see the Shockers battle at all. And I know they, it's only their second year there, but Wichita State's been good for a lot of years. They won't be around this year. But Houston, they do lose probably one of the greatest man buns to play the college game, and Rob Gray. Well, right. to be fair, there hasn't been very many. Oh my gosh, I I really did not like this guy during we the tournament. We found Kramer's soapbox now. I I did not like this guy in the tournament. 
but he, he was he was Houston's workhorse. They they lose him, but you get back American Coach of the Year from last year. You return Armani Brooks, who was Sixth Man of the Year last year, and then their preseason Rookie of the Year pick there in uh, Nate Hinton, who's a six five freshman guard. I think they, they've got the pieces at Houston to to match UCF and Cincinnati, and they pick up enough games to win the conference. Crazy. Um, I'm going with uh, UCF on this. Uh, they have a very good offense, but their defense is what kind of struggles a little bit. Uh, two of the uh, two of the big three that they kind of have. I was I'm going to put this in like a little uh, group as uh, Aubrey Dawkins and Colin Smith are. These are the two guys on this team that's going to put up. They're going to post double doubles to the rest of the season. As I already know, right now they already have um, averaging at least 10 uh, rebounds or 13 rebounds uh, per respective person. But uh, I this is these two guys are going to be. Um, helpful for this UCF team. Okay, I'm going to go with Cincinnati. Um, so I like there's some diversity in our picks. This Cincinnati team, they, they lose Jacob Gray that, or Jacob Evans, Evans, right? Um, I don't know. I was thinking Rob Gray. Um, they lose three of their top four scores. They do return Jerron Cumberland. Um, they lost to Ohio State earlier on this week. And, but the way they play defensively, they're not going to blow anybody out of the water offensively. But defensively, they keep themselves in games. They keep them low scoring. And I think they can get enough as Kramer must have hit his shin or something. Yep. I think they can. You all right? <laughs> yep. Okay. I had to point out. It was, it, was it was too funny not to point out. I'm taking Cincinnati to get the win in the conference. I've got Cincinnati. We've got two for Houston. Kramer with Central Florida. So some diversity. I like it. Caleb also taking Cincinnati. Caleb pretty much just waited for me to send in my picks, and then he – Copied and pasted. I think he changed the championship game, That's it. but every everything else is yeah. the same. So that is that is our AAC picks. Now let's move on to the ACC. Um, this one, I, I'd like to point out that this looked very different until Tuesday happened. Is yeah. that everyone was going, you know, Virginia, kind of talking about Syracuse, North Somebody Carolina, a little Clemson. bit, and then. And then Duke happened on Tuesday, and there's a lot of white and blue on our graphic now. I could still see Duke not winning the ACC and being the team to beat come tournament time? I want to point out that I had Duke already. So did Jacob. That, that's why I made that statement. Yeah. Is yeah. I, there, there was a certain number of us that had Duke before Tuesday happened, and, and then number Tuesday two. happened. And now oh, there are five. I was, well, we're I was, talking like when we get to our Final Four and championship yeah, picks. I was there teetering. Was, okay, there I, was a certain amount of Duke that was not there that Duke is now there after Tuesday. To be completely honest, I, was, I had Duke as mine for basketball. Somebody, I, that I, somebody I, I being didn't read Kramer. This, I didn't read the thing correctly. I'll throw it you out thought there. It was football. I thought it was football <laughs> we're talking about. So I act like it was for football. Uh, so Definitely picked Alabama to win the SEC in basketball, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> if it was, if it was <laughs> last we year. We were all so confused. You had Clemson winning the ACC in basketball. Which hey, they could possibly. Uh, Clemson's uh, a better team than they used to be. But I, I don't think they win the ACC. I think they're still no. the fifth best team in the ACC. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Okay. We're all picking Duke. We're right? all picking Duke. I think I'm picking. I'm picking Duke, but they're going to have three ACC losses. And I think one of them too will be to somebody you don't expect it to be to because it's Duke. So here are my three ACC losses for Duke. I think they have a close game with Florida State, but they win it. They lose to Syracuse, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech. I think Syracuse is the type of team the way they play that can give um, Duke some some trouble. Virginia, I think, is going to be in the top four of the ACC. I originally picked them to win it all, but I, I just I. I don't know. I, I think maybe Duke, Syracuse, Virginia, North Carolina is the way that top four ends up going. But we, we're all picking Duke. Really nothing else we need to add to that part of it. We'll get more into Duke, I'm sure, in a little bit. Okay. So I, I want to say a lot more about Duke, but if we'll talk about them okay. later, well, I'll wait. I'm sure somebody picked them to win their national championship. Yeah, I think, um, I think someone did. Moving on to the Big Ten. This conference is kind of – it's down. I don't really know any other way to put it. Um, it's – it's not a bad conference by any means, but it's definitely not where it was four or five years ago. Uh, I think this year, I think Purdue and Michigan State are the two favorites, but I think Purdue has the best player in the Big Ten, a young man by the name of Carson Edwards. I think that's the difference maker. So I think the Boilermakers win the Big Ten this year. Ryan? I agree with you. I'm going with Purdue. Um, again, you know, the name you mentioned was Carson Edwards. Um, had a fantastic night against Fairfield in game one, 30 points. Uh, I think he continues to do that just about all season long. He's going to be a thorn in the side of a lot of Big Ten teams. He's going to be a thorn in the side of a lot of really good teams. 
And uh, I think if he can continue to play at the level that he's at right now, he's going to be a candidate and really a favorite for, for the player of the year in the Big Ten. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going with Purdue. Jacob? This is a Big Ten conference that's starting the season only had three teams ranked in the preseason rankings. And really, when you look at the, the teams, maybe we'll get five into the NCAA tournament. It is, it's like Trevor said, there, it's not a good <laughs> conference this year. And, and Purdue and Michigan State, I think, will by far be the best two teams. In, I think with the Big Ten, it's there's like four or five teams that are right around 500. They'll be right around that bubble. You know, I think Iowa and Nebraska have the potential to be right around a, you know, a borderline tournament team. I, I think we'll see possibly – two Big Ten teams in the first four come I March. I would not disagree with but that. But I, I think Purdue, it, it, with Carson Edwards, it's too much for Michigan State. It's too much for the rest of the Big Ten. And I think Purdue will win the Big Ten by probably a game. And it'll come when they – I think Purdue might sweep Michigan State, and that that's what gets them the Big Ten championship. Kramer? What you guys don't understand is the Big Ten basketball beats up on each other a lot. They do. No, I totally understand that. And that's why I'm not fully committed with Purdue. And the most logical opinion for – Is you a Michigan State fan? No, no. Or a Michigan fan? Michigan fan? (laughs) I almost got slapped there. Yeah, you almost did. Um, uh, The most logical thing for this is when during their little tournament time for that, for the Big Ten title, it's always Michigan who always steps up. And I don't understand why. It seems like it's like that every single year. Like they should have, they should lose it, but then again, they end up pulling it out of yeah, and they win. I guess we should have clarified. I, this is regular season champions. Is this regular season? Yeah. Well, it's still big. Uh, it's still Michigan for me. Yeah. We'll get to the conference tournaments. In it's still March, gonna be Michigan like, for me, anyways. I, that's no kind of what I figured. So Caleb's picking Purdue. So four votes for the Boilermakers, one for the Wolverines. The Big 12, it has been Kansas's conference since 2005, I think. was When was the last time they didn't win one? Was it 04? So 14 in a row. They're going for 15? They're going – They're no, they've won, they've won 13 in a row. They're 13 going for 14. 14. Okay, so I knew it was – I couldn't remember which one it was. But I'm taking the Jayhawks. I, I think this is the first time in a, quite a few years they've came in as probably the favorite to win the national title and, like, hands down probably the favorite until Tuesday night. Um, now maybe you can make the argument that Duke's also, but coming into the regular the start of the season, it was Kansas and everybody else. I think this team's too talented. I think they'll they'll do your typical Kansas drop one on the road somewhere. Oklahoma State, it's always Oklahoma, yep, State. Oklahoma State. It's always at Gallagher Iba. I don't know or, why. Or at Hilton. It is Iowa State's always Gallagher Iba. <laughs> I mean, they could finish sixteen and two, and their two losses be to Oklahoma State and yeah. Iowa State on the road or something like yeah. that. I think Kansas gets it done, um, probably by a couple games. No, I think Kansas runs away with the Big 12 this year. Um, this is this is the most experienced team in the Big 12 in terms of at the top of the of the roster because the two new guys are both juniors. You know, the one the one new guy you look at is uh, I lost his name all Dieter. of a sudden. Quentin Grimes. Oh yeah. Um, Quentin Grimes. Uh, that that's that's a freshman. But uh, you look at this team. You've got Yudoka Azubuke is back. The Lawsons from from Memphis are both; those are the transfers that are they're both juniors. Dedrick Lawson is going to be a superstar. I think he's he's got so much talent, and so I just think this team is just going to be too much for the Big Twelve. Real quick, Caleb also picking Kansas for the 14th in a row. I think there were a couple different picks though in this one. We'll start with Kramer. Uh, I'm going with West Virginia. I just want to be something different. I to be completely honest, I, I'm getting tired. Not of seeing, a bad pick, I'm, though. I'm getting tired of seeing KU win that a lot. So is everybody else in the Big Twelve. Exactly. So I'm just throwing out there West Virginia because why not? The last few years, teams have had the opportunity to take the Big Twelve title away from Kansas, and then they lose to teams they're not supposed to lose when they beat Kansas. That's that's why Kansas keeps running away with titles. And granted, Kansas has a stellar team this year. But when I look around, and I'm done picking Kansas, so I wanted to be different as well. And although I think there's one team this year that has an opportunity to take down Kansas, it's Kansas State. They return pretty much everyone for their, from their team last year. They have the Big 12 Player of the Year, my prediction for that, and Dean Wade. You, you return Barry Brown. You return all of these guys that were on that, that stellar NCAA tournament team last year that made that run without Dean Wade. The question for Kansas State is I think they're going to get a win against Kansas 
at when Kansas comes to K State, they'll split that matchup. Is can Kansas State win the rest of the games that they're supposed to win and not cough one up to like a Baylor? That that that's and that's where I'm saying that that's why Kansas has been able to earn the Big Twelve championship in the last three or so years is their competitor is right there with them, and then they'll go drop a game to one of the bottom half teams of the Big Twelve conference. K State's got a team that may not do that this year and will have a shot at Kansas. So I'm going to be a little different, kind of go with an upset champion pick in, in K State and in the run of Kansas. I don't think it's a terrible pick. I just think Kansas State has underachieved the last couple of years, I think, and I could kind of, kind of see it happening again this year. That's I have no comment. <laughs> wow, that's a first. Not that, so either, that either means well, I'm too crazy, or no. Ryan is like, yeah, you, you make sense, but still well, Kansas. <laughs> I'm a Kansas fan. We know that. We, yeah, everybody knows. So I I will never acknowledge a pick of Kansas State as the, as as the Big Twelve champion. Understood. Because and here's why: a Kansas State will not win at Allen Fieldhouse. Period. You know that. You didn't even pick that. But the Octagon of Doom, which is the dumbest name that I've ever heard for an arena, even though it's not the actual name. Is it an octagon, though? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the The octagon of doom is Kansas's home away from home. They don't lose in Manhattan. They don't like to lose in Manhattan, and this Kansas team continues that. I think I think they sweep Kansas State, and I think I, – I'll tell you what. I think Kansas State's the number two. They're they're gonna fight with West Virginia for that that spot. I think Kansas State's a good basketball team, but I think Kansas sweeps Kansas State in the Big Twelve, and that's the difference. Yeah, and what I'm saying is, if Kansas State can drop one game to Kansas, drop one game to West Virginia, and then win everything else, I don't think it's gonna happen. Then then they will take the Big Twelve. I think I you're think, probably right. I think I think the but the question is, can a team do that? Because that's what it's gonna take to beat Kansas, and we've seen a team struggle with, you know, we, whoever's at the bottom of. And this year it could be a, you know, the, the two teams from Oklahoma, Baylor, one of those teams. You Iowa go State. And, and Iowa the State. reason they can't do that is because they're going to lose to Kansas twice. I have a feeling that <laughs> um, uh, whoever wins this, uh, whoever wins this, it's going to be vacated because of probably a shoe deal. So <laughs> <laughs> just throw good point, that Kramer. <laughs> I, That's it. You'll get my opinion on that in a little bit if you want. What I do don't you? think Kansas State's been implicated. In no, and and so here's the th- – while we're here – while we're here, here's the thing with with uh, with college basketball and what, what I think is going to happen. I think every major program in the country does it. I think you, there's no way you're going to get out of this investigation without having to discipline everybody. Kansas, Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky, Kentucky Florida, everybody. Villanova. We, we, everybody. We mentioned when this first came out last semester that we could be looking at an NCAA tournament where the one seeds all come out of, like, the MAC. Yeah. Every major program in the country does this. And so you're going to, at the at the end of all of this, the NCAA is going to have to punish, like we said, North Carolina, Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, the Blue Michigan Bloods. State, everybody. They can't afford to do that. So what's going to happen is everybody's going to get a slap on the wrist. We're going to continue like nothing ever happened because the NCAA can't afford to not have all of those teams in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, so – Got a little off track there, but the Big 12, Caleb Ryan and I are going with Kansas, Kramer, West Virginia, and Jacob is taking Kansas State. The Pac-12 uh, it wasn't a very good conference last year, and it doesn't really look like it's going to be much better this year, I don't think. But we will start with Jacob. Who are you taking the Pac-12 this year? Taking Oregon. I think there's a, a specific player there that I want to mention. I shut down in sixth grade, and then seventh grade rolled around, and that stopped. But you shut down Bull Bull. I in shut sixth down Bull Bull <laughs> in sixth grade. That was because I was about the same size. I have a lot of que- I have a lot of questions oh, yeah. to ask about. So that. wait, let's just drop all of our picks now. I'll just go ahead and say, um, right now was I'm it picking Bull Bull like hold seven up. foot one and se- hold in sixth Maybe grade. It was, it was no, I'm, he was I'm, he was like six time out, four. Time out. Before we get started, I'm just gonna go ahead because we'll probably kill a lot of time with this. I'm picking Oregon. Caleb's picking Oregon. Ryan and Kramer are picking UCLA. Yeah. If we have time, we're back into it. <laughs> but now I am intrigued. How did you shut down Bull Bull? He stood at the three-point line the entire game. Oh, that's stupid. Why? How tall was he? He was like 6'4", 6'5". How tall I was like 5'9", and about 
180 pounds. I was a big sixth grader, and then I stopped growing. So my first question, how'd you and guys so end up still playing five each other? Well, because he was in Kansas City That's, yeah, that's until right. well, he was been in Kansas City and then committed to Oregon, but he was playing in the, the same tournaments that my sixth grade basketball team was playing in, so we matched <laughs> up five, six different times, and because... Like I said, I was the one of the tallest kids around Kansas City for a year because I was five eight and one eighty in sixth grade, and then was five there, eight and one eighty as a are sophomore. Are there pictures in high school. of that somewhere? There has to of be five eight hundred and eighty pound sixth grade Jacob. No, no, Garden maybe Bowl it was Bowl. like one seventy. I don't think any of those are there. Well, I just like what you weighed <sighs> more. That on a good I'm, I'm not. I'm not shaming you by any means. No, I was a big sixth but grade. You weighed more. I don't want to talk about the size that I was in sixth grade. <laughs> you weighed more in sixth okay. grade than I did when I graduated. Okay. Well, I'm <laughs> I saying was I was I was like five eight one sixty one seventy one eighty. I, I it a long time ago and in sixth grade, and then come junior year of high school, I was still like five nine and one eighty. So I was six foot two seventy. In sixth so grade. how big was right. how big was Bull Bull when <laughs> he you was him? Six? he was probably six four and like one twenty. Yeah, buck twenty probably. He's still really skinny. Now he's seven two two thirty is what they have him listed as. But you got he's seven two, so he. I mean, that's why I was saying I, I shut him down in sixth grade, and then seventh grade rolled around, and then that. Did stopped. you guys play him? Did you play Wait, him in seventh grade? Did you I, think, I think seventh grade was where it. Where after seventh grade, we started school. Why didn't he basketball? Commit? And he, we didn't match up because he was playing in Kansas. So you, why didn't he commit to K, KU? Okay, you didn't recruit him that hard. No, they didn't. Wow, he's not a. I mean, he's yeah, he's a he's a top recruit, but. He doesn't. Kansas has a, Duke, a, a unique type. Of yeah, guy. he's a unique athlete. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and I don't he's, a, he's basically he a seven-two point guard. As a no, no, he's he a seven-two he point guard. Is what he, he is. wouldn't have worked at Kansas. Nah, yeah. that's true. He, Another system. He reminds me of a Kevin Durant. Yeah, I can see it. Is who Bull Bull reminds me of. He so, definitely doesn't remind me of Manute. That's for sure. No, not at all. Not I'm, knowledge is power. <laughs> it really is. I you know what? I I did you pick Oregon specifically so you could mention that? No, I think oh. Oregon's the best team in the Pac-12 because I think the Pac-12, and I said this last year, is the Pac-12 recently has not been a good conference really in anything. The Pac-12 is, is the I, I best said this the this conference. last year. Is I said it's the path- pathetic athletic conference, pathetic athletic. and it, it it's going to be the same way in basketball. Is you're going to have Oregon, maybe UCLA, maybe Washington, but it's it won't be a, a as we've seen them have issues with football. It is getting someone that they can p- challenge the, the top four teams in the country. It'll be tough basketball-wise for them to do the same thing. But in the Pac-12, I think Oregon is the best team. I'm taking Oregon as well um, to go along with uh, – they got Peyton Pritchard, who was their leading scorer last year. And they've got Bull Bull, who, like we said, he's kind of a, a weird player. Was shut down by Jacob um, Blair. I think, in sixth grade. <laughs> so I, he, here's my thought process on it. He's kind of – he's a, basically he's a seven foot two point guard. <laughs> tweet at him say It's going to be tough for teams to guard him. Um, and there's no sixth grade Jacob Blairs in the Pac-12 this year defensively, <laughs> so I think he's able to to kind of flourish a little bit and give me the Ducks. You guys went different than that, so when you're done laughing, who are you taking? <laughs> I, I'm going with UCLA. If Moses Brown can stay off the free throw line, yeah, then I think UCLA's gonna at least have a shot to take a run at the Pac-12. I just think the Pac-12 is so bad that a team like UCLA is gonna have a really good chance to win it. Um, when you've got a seven foot kid like Moses Brown, um, that that can move a little bit at seven foot, he's a bigger guy, but he's he's got the ability to move, um, and so I, I think the pick in that situation becomes becomes UCLA. I, yeah, I just I I this is this is not a good basketball conference. I think the seventh best of the seven. Yeah, it might. I'd have a look at their conferences. It might there might be. Conferences that are better in this. So the Missouri Valley could end up being better than the Pac-12 this year. I think Moses Brown's probably the, one of the best defenders in the Pac-12 as well, and uh, he's probably one of the, a big difference maker to have on a team. And same with uh, Chris Wilkes. Uh, he's a good shooter, and he's an all-around athlete for this team, and probably one of the best players in the Pac-12 as well. Yeah, not unlike Shaq, just keep him off the free throw. Yeah, don't ha- don't hack a Shaq more like hack a Brown. <laughs> Which Kansas fans are saying the same thing about Udoka Azubuke, So, yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the next one.
you that the views expressed in today's show do not reflect the views of KZLX, KNWT, or Northwest Missouri State University. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the show. the final conference pick them the sec i'm going with kentucky i know they got clowned by duke the other night but uh as we'll get into probably i'm sure in a little bit duke is really good and i still think kentucky's the best team in the sec kentucky's probably still an elite eight sweet 16 team maybe yeah. a final four team maybe yeah I, I don't i don't think this is this is a kentucky team that we've seen in the past this isn't this isn't the you know the, the duke has taken over the spot yeah. that we expected to see kentucky take um, I still think Kentucky had a. I mean, they had a great recruiting class. There's no question about it. They've still got some pretty good one and dones, but I just don't think this is the Kentucky team we've seen in the past. I still think they win the SEC, however, because I don't think the SEC is that good. Um, I think I, I wanted to pick somebody else because I don't think this is the Kentucky team we've seen in the past. But I know I can't pick Tennessee, and I I just I can't I can't go with Auburn either, as much as I wanted to. You know, I look at these teams at the top, and I just don't trust them. I trust Kentucky to win the SEC because they seem to always figure it out. I don't trust LSU either. I just it, I want to trust a team like Tennessee, but I just can't do it. Caleb is also picking Kentucky. I think you guys might have had something different, so and we'll start with Jacob. The SEC is probably the sixth best conference basketball-wise. I think they're better than the Pac-12, but I think both the Big East and the ACs, the AAC are is better. And I went with Tennessee because, for some reason, I think somebody knows something we don't, having them preseason <laughs> ranked at number six. they th- Their top recruit was number 82 on the ESPN Top 100 list. They were an okay team last year, but someone knows something that we aren't able to have figured out yet. Is There's something about this team a lot of people clearly really like, so I'm going to roll with it. And after what I saw from Kentucky on Tuesday night, I think I like the pick because I don't think Auburn's there. And I think someone's going to win the SEC with five losses this year. Because you're going to see a 13-5 and five conference team win the regular season conference championship. That's where this SEC kind of lies, and I think that might be Tennessee. Kramer? I'll go with Auburn on this. Uh, I feel like it's, a, it's good to have a, a good point guard to run your offense through, and they have him with Jared Harper. And the way that Kentucky has already lost, it kind of helps out a lot um, uh, for Clem- – uh, not Clemson, excuse me, um, Auburn's uh, way to get into uh, – to win this uh, the SEC. Okay, so a little bit different there as well. I think the only one that was across the board was the ACC, which – which wasn't before no, Tuesday. No, it wasn't before. So, yeah, I mean, I like that we had some diversity. Now, real quick, let's jump into our national championship picks. Um, five different people making picks, and we had three different national champions. So let's start with Ryan. This is a homer pick. I'm just going to be honest right off the bat. Real quick, too, give me just a final four. You don't have to break it down or anything, but if you had to pick a final yeah. four right now. Yeah, um, I'm going uh, Kansas, Villanova, Duke, and uh, and Nevada, I think a surprise a surprise team in the Final Four to a lot of people. Um, having the Martins back, man, that's they are you know <laughs> they're a for real yeah. basketball team. They're going to make a lot of teams look really stupid. I think and Jacob and I talked about this the other day. I don't think it's crazy to say you're, you're going to steal. I'm going to steal it. That, do you want to say it? You can go ahead and say it. Okay. So my my Final Four is Kansas, Duke, Kansas State, and then Nevada. And I don't think Nevada is a crazy Final Four pick because I think looking at their schedule, if they make the Final Four, they make the Final Four undefeated. It is at their their schedule, they roll through the regular season undefeated. And that's, Nevada that's, a, team. that's a scary good basketball team. Kramer, your Final Four. Uh, Duke, Kansas, Michigan, and Nevada. Okay, so and I've we've all got Nevada in the Final Four, which means they're going to go nineteen and thirteen and not, not make, the, make play. the tournament. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got Nevada, Duke, K- Kansas, and Syracuse as my Final Four. I teams. can never trust Syracuse. I like to point somehow out somehow they always seem to be there. 
You, exactly. ever, you ever notice that? It's, no, it's like, man, yeah. Syracuse had a rough year this year. They're coming in. Like last year when they shouldn't have been in the tournament, four. and then they they'll, made they'll the Elite up, Eight. Yeah, they'll end up having a losing what record. The year still before? make the tournament. <laughs> the and, Final uh, Four. Yeah, yeah, 11. Seed. Yeah, they, so, but they return a lot from last year. And, um, and that zone defense is, is kind of – I think that'll be a team that gives Duke some fits yeah. when they play. But uh, So those are our Final Four teams. Ryan, your national champion is? Again, a, a homer pick. I'm, I'm going with Kansas. I just think because they are – in, in the conversation of teams that can win a national title other than Nevada, Kansas is the most experienced. We've seen in the past, and this always is the case, it seems like, the NCAA tournament yields to the teams with more experience. They yield to the teams that, you know, just they, they have everything put together. They're a prepared team. They know what they're doing. As good as Duke looked Tuesday night, that may not be the case this year. But in the in years past, in in history, the, the NCAA tournament has yielded to teams with more experience. And so, because I can't trust a, a Nevada team to go all the way and win a national championship, no they, matter they don't how play good they are in the regular season, that's yeah. the concern for Nevada. Yeah. Is their schedule is is a is a Wichita State type schedule from five six years ago, and so if they hit the Final Four and all of a sudden they're playing blue bloods like Duke and Kansas and Villanova, they're going to struggle. But because Kansas outside of Nevada is the most experienced team, that's where I'm going. Kramer, I sense another homer pick. Uh, actually, I switched it before we started. Uh, I picked KU, uh, but I'd love to see Michigan do it. Uh, I feel like KU is just a well rounded team to where. Has a sprinkle of a little bit of uh, got a little bit of those seniors that are going to lead your team. Got those juniors that are going to help you solidify your team for even next year as well. And then you have also your sophomore freshman. This is like a well-rounded team. Not just all throwing all your freshmen in there try to win yourself a championship. This is a oh, this is a scary team to go up against in the tournament time. But they'll probably lose in the first round or second round. Yeah, probably. The thing the thing about Kansas is that they can pick you apart from just about any direction. Mm-hmm. They have scorers. They have shooters. They have a guy. They have a dominant inside presence in Yudoka as a And they can throw to their um, yeah. bench as well. Right. They, they're still going to uh, And so contribute. I think that, that makes a difference for Kansas. So Jacob and I end up having the same national championship pick, but I will give the floor to Jacob to break down that said pick. Who here watched Tuesday night? Okay. That was one of the craziest opening game performances I've You're had. You're talking about Duke-Kentucky for those. Yeah. It, it was really the Duke game. I don't yeah. think Kentucky was there. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it – I will say I think it was a mix of Kentucky's a lot worse than we thought it they were. But Duke, you've got the three top freshmen in the country that did not look like freshmen in R.J. Barrett, Zion Williamson – Cam Reddish, it's a complete team. There's too much freakishness on this Duke team. This this Duke team reminds me of the Anthony Davis, John Wall team from Kentucky. Yeah. Like that, they, they are that dominant. They're gonna they're gonna have a, a freshman type game in the ACC where we see them struggle. Probably like against like a Boston against College a, that and maybe struggle with Syracuse. But come NCAA tournament time, there is too much firepower on this team. It, it is, I was watching the Duke garbage time minute squad out on the floor and it and there were guys out there playing the garbage time minutes with five minutes to go in the game that got significant minutes last season that probably could be a tournament team and that's the team playing garbage minutes for duke there is too much talent on this duke team here is here is one knock and i think this this duke team is going to be the most entertaining team we've seen in a long time i have no doubt about that they are clearly the number one team in the country right now i don't think there's any question the one knock that i have on this duke team is almost every possession the points came within the first 10 seconds of the possession there is one way to beat to beat this duke team and that's to slow the to to slow the game down syracuse virginia when you get to the final four Kansas is going to have the ability to slow the game down. Villanova is going to have the ability to slow the game down. Those are two teams that I think if if they meet those two teams in the Final Four, one of them, they're going to struggle because of the ability to slow the game down. I think when the game slows down for Duke, they're going to have to find some tough shots. I don't know. Zion Williamson is not a shooter. We know that. Yes, he was one for one from the three point line in that game, and the one he hit was gosh, a good you, shot. And was, you saw that three pointer like fifteen times. 
I would also like to point so out. So annoying. Zion, I, Zion Williamson was the number one recruit in the nation this year, and I think he's number two. He was number two. Number two. RJ Barrett. That's, RJ Barrett they flipped him right one. before. That's yeah. right. I think RJ Barrett's the better, yeah. the yes. better player than, but, than Zion. And to Ryan, your point, I, don't, I think that there's with, with probably the best coach out there right now in Shashevsky. With he's the, certainly he's he's I mean he's the best right. basketball coach with, with too much <laughs> talent on this team. I don't think. Uh, especially come tournament time, that being able to slow them down is going to matter because come tournament time, they're going to have seen Virginia. They're going to have already seen Syracuse. They're going to be ready they for that. They play Kansas, too. There, there's, mm-hmm. there is too much talent on this team to for, for anyone to, to really match them. This could be one of the more dominant teams we, we've seen in, in, since Kentucky was... 2012. Y- yeah, 2012. And I think, I, I think the key is to, to beat this Duke team. You, if you slow the game down, you keep them within arm's length. Then when you have them within arm's length, you capitalize on the youth. You capitalize on the fact that they're going to make mistakes down the well, stretch. And, and, and I think game. you got to get them frustrated. Like you, you said, to. you know, a team like Virginia, you a team like to. Syracuse, those teams tend to – Villanova, you get yeah. them out of system, yeah. and they're, they're going to – And so I, I think there will be teams that figure that out. And I think it's – at least one is going to come in the NCAA tournament. I'm still picking Duke. I, I, I never pick – Teams that are based around freshmen because they're freshmen, and normally by the end of by March, they they kind of already cashed in and they're set on the NBA. But I think this team, watching them play just the first 30 minutes of the Kentucky game, I ended up falling asleep before it got over. But watching just that, I was like, this team is it's it's on a different level. I could see a scenario where they drop to a team like Kansas or something in the tournament. But I, I, I'm going with Duke. And I, and I want to talk about one player in particular that's not a freshman that then ends up being a, a junior, and that's Jack White, who looks like he's going to play the, the bruiser minutes and, and do the dirty work for the rest kind of the of freshman. Kind of like a Luke Kennard. Exactly. Type. And when you've got a player like that that can match the rest of your freshmen, I mean, his numbers from the first game were 9 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists. Those are the numbers that don't stick out to a lot of people, but those are the key that's that key player on the floor that does the things that need to be done to keep the rest of the freshmen in check. And having that player with – there's just too much with this Duke team. It's almost ridiculous. So I think we had th- – Caleb picked Duke as well. So three of us took Duke. Two of us took – Caleb picked Kansas is what he's telling yes, me. It shows it on the thing. Well, but he said the other night that he was going to pick Duke. So he's ah. picking Kansas. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did. Um, but three of <laughs> – I can three of us are now. three of us are going to Kansas. Two of us are going Duke. Real quick, because uh, we should probably get to a break pretty soon um, before Caleb starts talking in my ear some more. The your guys is player of the year. Who do, who's going to be the guy you're going to be paying attention to that you think at the end of the year will be the player of the year, whether it be the Wooden or whatever award it is, Ryan? One more homer pick, Dedrick Lawson. Um, uh, I just think he's going to have a fantastic year at Kansas this year, um, simply because of the way he settles into that system. The way he works in that system, we've seen so many guys in that role have so many great seasons. Frank Mason. And I just I just think it's another one of those situations. Kramer? Go on, Bland, uh, Blandon. Brandon Clark from Gonzaga. Um, he's a junior now this year. He did transfer from uh, San Jose State. Just something different. I mean, he last year uh, averaged 17.5 points per game, eight rebounds. Something different. I want to see something come out, maybe like a shock. Cause you never know what you can do the rest of the season. I believe the favorites coming into the season were Luke May and Zion Williamson. Um, Luke May from North which, Carolina. Which makes zero sense that Luke May is even that, on that list because you watch him and you're like, this guy is not good at basketball. And then you figure out he got like 24 points and 10 rebounds on 12 shots. Yeah. it's He's, he's like the best – Unathletic person ever ever to play the game of basketball. It's yeah, and that's there were some Wisconsin teams that, and <laughs> I mean, he's challenging Frank Kaminsky for that role. Anyways, speaking of um, Wisconsin, Cole Aldrich. Yeah, that's all too. I have to say. Um, speaking of Wisconsin, your Sasha Khan and Jeff Withy also. Yeah, Jeff Withy. Oh, Jeff. Jeff Withy. Jeff, Jeff Withy is the most not athletic player oh, to ever be good at basketball. Gosh. Speaking of Wisconsin, staying and shoot at the top of the key. Your Potential player of the year is? Ethan Happ. My man. The 6'10 senior over there playing for the Badgers. Already put up a triple-double this season. First one of the season. He's averaging a triple-double in the year. He's averaging a triple-double. The crazy thing about his triple-double is he had more rebounds and assists than he did points. Was it like 10, 11, 10, 11, and 12? 
points, rebounds, assists. And I think Ethan Happ will be the sole reason why Wisconsin will be a tournament team come March. He, he's a solid big man that'll that'll put up numbers wise in all three categories: points, rebounds, and assists. And it's just a solid player there for Wisconsin. I hope Michigan rolls through. Him. <laughs> I hope they do. If you didn't hear me, I hope Michigan rolls through Wisconsin. Oh, we've got you. we've got way too much homerism well, fan I was, fandom going on on this show. I don't like right? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I'm going to take another direction and and point out somebody outside of my of my home. You're not because taking there's right. one guy there's one guy that on the same on the same roster as as Clark that okay. that um, Kramer picked that I think is is a step better is Rui Hachimura. Mm-hmm. 33 points in game 1 for for Gonzaga. He's going to be a really entertaining player to watch this year. I think he's a guy that is a, is a sleeper pick for for the Naismith Award again uh, to to go outside of the homer pick in that situation. I think he's he's a fantastic basketball player. I think this could be one of the more wide open years yeah. we've seen for this. Where even come the last month of the season, there's still ten fifteen players that you just don't know who's going to get it come and, that. I time. mean, you have to consider Caleb Martin at Nevada. You mm-hmm. have to consider. I mean, there's there's a lot of guys that you've got to think about. Phil Booth at Villanova is a guy that yeah. I've seen get some attention. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a handful of guys. My pick is a guy that he won't get it, but he should. He probably should. He's if if you're not a diehard college basketball fan, he's the best college basketball player you've never heard of. That being the Dominator, Mike, Mike Dom, Dom from South Dakota State. Whatever South Dakota State does this year, um, and who knows, they could be a 15 seed and get beat in the first round, or they could make a Sweet 16 run or something crazy. It'll be because of Mike Dom. They will be as good as he is this year. Um, he statistically is he's, he's he doesn't ever stick out at you. I mean, he never has, like, great, great, great games where you're like, holy cow, but he's so consistent. I would equate Mike Dom to Doug McDermott. And that's exactly where I was, I was ready to go. I was to say that. You know, I, at first I thought maybe Jimmer Fredette. I was yeah, like, no, no, probably more like Doug, Doug McDermott. McDermott. Um, I'm going Mike Dom. And I think the difference between Mike Dom and uh, Doug McDermott is Mike Dom's game, I think, transitions to the NBA a little bit better, too. So give me the dominator. That is who I think could, should be player of the year. At the should NBA. be. He won't be. Unless they go like thirty-one and one, which even then I don't think they'll give it to him because he's not in one of those. So, yeah. Um, so that's kind of about all. I think all we had for for college basketball. Um, we've spent a lot of time. Yeah. On this, is there anything else you guys you guys wanted to add? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think we've pretty much touched on just about. Go blue. <laughs> this was like a very Homer segment. So I, that's okay. I, I could have made it more, but Wichita State's just not good this year. I'm so just hoping I, Iowa can make the NIT. So, good job, Trevor. Yeah. yeah. High five. For not being home. Hey, at least my homer pick is a legitimate national Makes championship sense. contender. Yeah, not wrong. I didn't so, think Michigan was going to make it to the national championship last year. They'd I thought it. they had a chance. I think I had them in the Final Four early date. Um, but those are our picks and our wonderful insight from the college basketball season. Here in a couple weeks when the games get a little bit better and more fun to pick, we'll start doing a college basketball pick em. Might not happen until after Christmas break. It's tough to, to gauge. what I haven't looked too far ahead with the schedule, but maybe we can find a couple games to pick each we'll week. Have, so. We'll have some games within those, those tournaments uh, that, that are going to start during Feast Week, which are always fun. It's, it's my favorite time of the college basketball season. It's not tournament time. It's these these odd tournaments where you get some weird matchups. Mm-hmm. I know the I think it's the Maui Invitational. You're going to have I think Gonzaga and Duke on opposite sides of that bracket, which having those two teams meet up in Hawaii would be a- another test to see where Duke I, stands, and I'd see that game possibly the only being problem, a 35 point. The only problem is that Duke's going to lose to Chaminade in the first round. Okay. So. <laughs> is that is that <laughs> who they gave? <laughs> Chaminade's always in that tournament. I think they've only won like one game ever. Well, it's, like, it's like BYU or some, something. Virginia. But I, I yeah. just, why would they match them up against they, Duke? They're like, there's not fair. They're, they're always the eight seed in the tournament. Because why not? <laughs> yeah, so um, they're. Not so much in the early part of November, but there will get to be some better games. I think really, it's unfortunately I don't think we'll be here because it'll be yeah. Thanksgiving break. But when, is, when does Kansas play Duke? Is that December? I think it's mid December. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, but there are some some good games on the docket. Really, no major upsets so far um, through the first game or two of college basketball. Scott Drew's still not a good coach. Bingo. Uh, they got beat. Was it Stephen? No, it was Texas Southern that beat Baylor. What a mess. Scott Drew just Scott Drew's the worst coach in college basketball history. Yeah, so Scott Drew just not a 
not not a good coach. Great recruiter, not a good coach, but not the start that Baylor wanted to the season. Other than that, nothing crazy. Uh, looks like Kansas, Duke, those are going to be the two teams I, to beat. I think year. during Feast Week we'll get a little bit of mm-hmm. drama somewhere just with some of the matchups we'll get. But I think everything will stay pretty steady until we get to conference play where, it, where things will actually start. We're more, And we always see that conference play, and it's just – great when it comes to college basketball i like how i asked if we had anything to add and we said no and then we added about five more minutes of stuff. There, there's way too um, much college basketball and i think i think our i think our pro- producer caleb winzo also liked that as well as he's been in my ear saying five more minutes three more minutes one more minute so yeah we um a lot to talk about college basketball there'll be a lot more to talk about as the season goes on as well and when conference play begins and then as always march is a ton of fun